Rumi got a lot of Junka. Karak need custom Junka truck. Okay. Needs Daka and go faster and faster. But this is my Junka. Nah, Karak gets the cart. Or Rumi gets the chopper. Okay. I suppose I'm building a Junka truck. Whatever that is. Hey everyone, Gabriel with Gabriel's Hobby Studio here. So to fulfill Karak's request, I will be scratch building an orc vehicle. I have a lot of toy parts and old model kits here to use, so let's get on with it. The first thing that I'm going to do is try and get a basic idea of what it is that I want the silhouette to look like. Right away I can tell I'm immediately drawn to using the remnants of this toy plane and this old truck model that I got in pieces. By using the pre-existing bed and cap structure of the truck, as well as the basic shape of the engine area, uh, that will save me a lot of time in figuring out that portion of the silhouette. But really, the idea here that I'm really liking is the idea of these orcs taking a downed aircraft and using that engine inside of a truck and salvaging as much as they can for the aircraft. Essentially, I'm envisioning a jet-fueled monstrosity of a truck. Once I've got the basic silhouette kind of figured out, I'm going to move on to put the base of it together and I'm going to build from the ground up. Mind you, the silhouette is still flexible at this point and it will be changing slightly as this project evolves. These wheels and wheel rack are from an old RV toy that I'm going to repurpose to fit inside of the landing gear of the plane and kind of give the side of it a tank-like silhouette. To make these pieces fit together, I'm opting to cut into the landing gear area to accommodate the posts that the wheels sit in. It does take me quite some time to hollow out the tracks, and then figure out the placement of the slots. But once I've got that figured out, it's very easy to transfer those markings from this piece to the other one. With those slots cut and knowing that this rack will sit inside of the landing gear, I want to make sure that the wheels stay in place because there's nothing really holding them there at the moment. I don't want to glue the bars down, I want to leave it so the wheels will actually turn and this piece can actually move on the table. My initial attempt here is a failure. I'm just using a couple of plastic flaps to pressure fit on top of those bars. One roll of the wheels though revealed that that is not successful at all. So I opted to use a zip tie because it would be small enough to fit around the posts and it would help keep the axle in place. With the wheels figured out, I set that part of it aside for now. I have to wait for the glue to set. I have several pieces here from various toys that are one-sided because they are tabbed and slot onto the original toy. For my purposes, I do need some more surface area to be able to glue things together. I'm taking some of this flat plastic sheet and using it to create a flat bottom, thus increasing the surface area for gluing. I make sure to tackle the engine first, as I feel that's the main focal point of the build, and that way by the time I've done all the trimming on the other pieces, I've got that one set and ready to go, and I can just continue working. I do end up deciding that I need to block the engine a little bit more. I'm also going to need to break up some of the negative space that I can foresee being right behind the engine. Because the wheels are so close together, they don't have the spread apart wide base that would make this really stable. There's a chance that the vehicle could tip or rock one way or the other. So part of what I'm doing with locking the engine up and then trying to figure out how I'm going to take care of that negative space is also to add weight to the front so that way when I put models in the back, the whole thing doesn't just tip over. At several points throughout this build, you see me break out a plastic container that has baking soda in it. And I'm using that to instantly cure my super glue and also to act as a stronger connection or a weld for the super glue to make sure that some of these pieces are going to stay in place. And you would be right. 
hot glue would be a lot easier in this case. However, I forgot that I had a hot glue gun for the majority of this project. I tend to not keep a lot of my tools on my desk. I have them either hanging on the wall around my workspace or in some drawers under my desk. And you know what they say, out of sight, out of mind. While waiting for the glue to cure, I'm going to move on and get some other stuff done. I do want to make some orc teeth that will sit on the front of the vehicle. That's a very kind of orconic orc thing to do, and I think it'll help sell this as an orc creation. I'm okay, but this is a good learning point. In my moment of negligence and being too comfortable with my tools, I did not apply enough forward thinking to be able to foresee that injury happening. Whenever you're working with any tool, you should be mindful of the tool and your relationship to it at all times. And that was something that I failed to do. The point that I'm trying to make is whenever you're using any tool, be mindful of the relationship between the tool and yourself. It only takes one second of negligence or being carelessly comfortable with a tool to slip up and cause an injury. I figured that it was something that I needed to bring up about being safe and aware of your tools. Anyway, back to the custom Junka truck. For the engine section of the build, I decided to cut off part of the tail section from this plane and attach it to the engine to draw that shape out a little bit more. I also cut out some little pieces of that card I was using earlier to put on the sides to hide the wheel wells from the truck model kit and bulk the side of the engine compartment. Now I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to make this engine sit on the vehicle. Is it going to sit leaning over the edge or is it going to sit right on top up front against the front edge? I think I'm going to have to go with putting it on top. There are some pieces that I want to add to the front that if this thing is tilted and leaning off the edge, I don't think that would fit really well, and you wouldn't be able to see those elements as clearly. Before I attach the truck bed to this, I do want to fill the wheel rack area in a little bit, and to do that I'm going to take some of that plastic sheet that I have and cut a strip that will fill in between the two landing gear pieces. This doesn't do a lot for the actual build, however it does help me just closing off the underside and it will also give me a good point for contacting extra weights and making sure that they are glued in place. I want to try and put as much weight in the front of the vehicle so that way when I put models in the bed of the truck the whole thing doesn't tip over. To figure out my negative space issue, I'm dry fitting some of the pieces here so I can see what it will look like. So that way I can see it in place. I'm really liking these little bits from the uh, plane. I think they will go really nicely in helping to block through sight so you can't see directly through the side of the truck underneath of the cab and out the other end. And in order to block the engine section a little bit, I'm going to cap off the back end that's going to be real close to the cab. This little piece of plastic with the overhang, it will help to prevent some direct line of sight down into that area of the model, but then there's that overlapping detail that will look real nicely, especially after I add rivets. At this point, I'm going to start adding on to the front of the vehicle. I've got this little piece here that I think will work well for the lights and the radiator. And yes, hot glue would be so much easier, but I haven't realized that I have hot glue yet. And if you're wondering why I haven't realized that I have hot glue yet, it's because I just got a new bottle of super glue. How many other people do that? They forget that they have another kind of glue than the one that they just bought. What kind of vehicle doesn't have a ton of extra pipes all over it, especially in a wasteland? That's what I can use to fill in some of the negative space on the engine. So busting my bucket of wires out of storage, I've got some decently sized ones here that I'm going to use to mimic pipes that are running along the front of the engine and around the side. This is going to be part of what I do to fill that negative space, so I think it's a win-win overall. After stopping for a meal and coming back to this project, I continued to work on it a little bit. Didn't get too far into this though, before realizing that my camera wasn't actually on. 
I'm trying to figure out how I'm going to account for this thing supporting the truck bed. And I've got this radiator piece, um, it's kind of a grill section. I think I got it off of a Star Wars toy. Well, it actually fits underneath the bed real nice. Because of that grill-like texture and some of the other details in there, I think it kind of works as some kind of anti-gravity pad. <laughs> Who me got the glue? Yes, I finally remembered that I have hot glue now. And so I started using some of that to make my attachments. I've got this tiny little clamp that I'm using quite a bit for this project. It's just so that way when I'm working I can make sure that the pieces that I'm trying to put together actually stay in place and don't shift because I do scoop things around my table quite a bunch. While I've still got the hot glue out, I'm going to run along a lot of my edges and start adding some hot glue weld beads between some of the plates and sections on the vehicle. You can do the same thing if you're really gentle with squeezing the trigger on the hot glue so that only a little bit of it comes out at a time and you're constantly moving the nozzle as not to build up too much glue in one area. Oh, and here's where it starts to come together. I am now super gluing and hot gluing the truck bed down to the main body of the vehicle. I'm going to let this sit for quite some time though before I move on to any of my more aggressive steps here shortly. With everything basically finished at this point, all of those plates are too clean cut for some random hack job that's just throwing bits of metal and different things together. Taking my rotary tool and being very careful with it, I'm going to grind and sand my way into the edges to break the smooth planes on the sides of those plastic pieces and try and give some kind of plasma cut or random sawing through marks on all of the attached plates. Starting with my drum sander, I will work from that and then move on to a smaller grinding bit to get some different sizes and textures to these cuts and mars on the vehicle. My goal in using the sander and the grinder is to alter the surface in a large enough way so that way I can get through the bulk of the job as quickly as possible. Satisfied with the added texture, I'm going to go ahead and start to put rivets in place now. My initial thinking behind this is that it's going to look better if I get all of the texture in place first and then place the rivets on. I also did not want to use my rotary tool and have any of the small bits of plastic go flying. I was wearing safety glasses and a mask, but still. To do the rivets, I'm using the same method that I did with my cultist altar, where I'm using a leather punch to punch out the very tiny discs of plastic. You can use thin cardboard like a cereal box cardboard or any kind of paper and it would work out just fine. If you enjoyed this video and you would like to see more, please like, subscribe, and make sure that you hit the bell icon so that way you can be notified when I post new videos. You can also join me on Facebook and Instagram, links in the description below. As always, have fun, be creative, and happy hobbying.